The national shutdown organized by Labour Federations Kosatu and Saftu went ahead today. They were calling on government to deal with poverty and unemployment levels in the country, amongst other issues. Whilst uh, there were protests around the country, the economy was not totally brought to its halt. But there was disruption, with some businesses deciding to close shop for the day. Labour Federation, Safdu and Kosatu showed a united front as they handed over a memorandum of demands to the presidency. Hundreds of their members marched to the highest office in the land. They're bemoaning the rising cost of living driven by higher fuel and electricity prices, among other factors. Kosatu has called for a cap on the fuel price. The cost of living in this country is so unaccessible and available, I mean, affordable to the working class. You will know that those who are lucky to be employed today they are unable to transport themselves to work because the salary that they are taking home is actually less to the, the, that which they, 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 they are using to go to, to work. They can't afford the food basket grocery in this country today. The petrol is unaffordable in this country. The electricity, which is expensive, it is also unavailable. Economic activity in the Bloemfontein CBD was partially disrupted as the march proceeded to the provincial government headquarters. Learners at some schools also returned home as teachers joined the march. The Labour Federations are demanding a basic income grant for the unemployed and a minimum living wage for workers. Together we have power. So once collective bargaining is then challenged, then it creates problems for individuals as, as members, as, as employees, to, for us to survive. We are affected by the standard of living in this country. It's deteriorating on a daily. Uh, Directly and indirectly, it's affecting in particular black families, black breadwinners, and the unprivileged uh, young people who are jobless. I don't know when am I going to be employed permanently. I want a permanent post. I want my, my salary to be increased because we're struggling. All the money that we're getting there, it's, it's peanuts. In Durban, members of the South African Democratic Teachers Union called for more teachers to be employed in the province and also complained of low salary increases. Kosatu said workers needed to earn a living wage as inflation continues to be a burden on the poor. The trade unions handed over a memorandum to the provincial government at the Durban City Hall. Uh, issue of 10 million uh, people who are in an uh, uh, unemployment grant of 350, which in itself is not enough with the rising cost of uh, living, as you have indicated, the rising cost of uh, petrol, the rising cost of uh, uh, food items, and all those issues. This is our beginning. We should not stop because the employers are insulting us. Who can be giving a 2%? Who can be giving 1.5% as such? We are dealing with the government that does not care. If you can uh, get the message from the shop floor, the nurses will tell you that some of their relatives are unemployed, but they're nurses. Uh, some of them, they're earning 3,000 rand. Some of them are earning uh, uh, below, the, below the minimum uh, wage agreement. Kosatu in the Eastern Cape hopes the newly appointed provincial cabinet will prioritize the needs of workers. Kosatu members march to the office of the Premier as part of the national stay away. The Eastern Cape is saddled with a 42% unemployment rate. Kosatu in the province says there are no engagements between the federation and the provincial government. The workers are in their own right to demonstrate uh, where they are not uh, happy. Of course, issues that they are raising in their memorandum are issues that uh, are cutting across. They are not only affecting workers, they are affecting uh, people of our country, uh, ordinary people, masses of our people are really in this uh, very uh, tough situation. In Pulukwane, marchers gathered from all five districts of the province. While the march was peaceful with no destruction of property, more than half of the businesses shut down for the day. Kosatu President Zingiswa Lossi and SACP General Secretary Solima Baila joined the workers. The frustrations that workers are feeling on the floor is the fact that what they are taking home and what they are using to get to work does not correspond. The cost of living, I mean a worker has to decide whether today you are going to walk to work or 
or you're going to buy bread. There's no contradiction be, be, be for us to march and still be in alliance. The issue is that those deployed in government must do the right thing and prioritize key issues facing the working class and must not be focused on peripheral questions. Even the bureaucracy in government must focus on the primary task of the manifesto of the ruling party. The national shutdown had little impact in the Northern Cape. Kosatu members descended on Kimberley streets, but it was business as usual for residents around the city. The trade union and its affiliates handed over a memorandum of grievances to Premier Dr. Zamani Sol. Meanwhile, Minister in the Presidency, Mondi Gungubele, described governments reneging on the 2018 multi-year collective salary agreement with unions as an unfortunate discord. He says government will avert that situation at the negotiating table this time around. Unions have signaled that if their demands are not met, they will embark on another shutdown in October. All right, Dr. Lumkile Mondi is a senior uh, lecturer at the School of Economics and Business Science at Wits University. Joins us now via Zoom to try and unpack uh, this uh, big issue, uh, the national shutdown that's taken place across the country today. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program. Um, before we start sort of um, breaking down the merits or demerits, um, what's your take on the turnout today? Was it impressive or what are, what are your thoughts? Um, uh, good evening and thank you so much for inviting me to your program this evening. Uh, we expected an extremely poor turnout uh, because of the disconnect uh, uh, of trade unionism uh, to uh, rural and township struggles uh, that they've become quite corporatist and move away from the history uh, of what trade unionism in South Africa has been about, about uh, uh, firstly being a community member and after being a community member, being a student in your community and then the, after being a, a worker and therefore being embedded in all those different facets of your life. In the post-1994, we've seen uh, many trade, trade unionists uh, becoming quite alienated uh, from uh, those grassroots that they've historically been known for. And therefore, it's not surprising that many of these strikes will probably uh, have those uh, that are working, uh, particularly those that sit at Nedlec and are able to uh, get um, uh, 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 paid because they've notified the, uh, the, 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 the partners at Nedlec and therefore going on strike really does not have their pocket. So we're not surprised by the turnout. It's a reflection of a maturing democracy, of a union that is uh, concerned with worker issues and only opportunistically start thinking about broader societal and community issues. Was this the best way to um, provoke government into policy changes and taking action? Absolutely. Remember, the canon of a general strike uh, is one of the canons that is available from organized labor. So uh, many of us are not surprised that they use this canon uh, because that's the only thing that they have really. And through that arrangement, the cooperative arrangement at NEDLEC, uh, they, they use it effectively. Whether uh, it's going to advance their struggle, uh, given uh, that their own partners, uh, particularly for COSATU, are in government, and COSATU has been part and an architect uh, of the destruction of our economy uh, and the embeddedness of corruption uh, under Zuma regime because they are the ones uh, who believe that a state-led uh, economic development uh, under Zuma uh, was a panacea for South Africa's economic problem and sat back and kept quiet uh, when Zuma was uh, repurposing state institution and leading to uh, almost complete destruction of infrastructure, be it uh, our electricity infrastructure, our rail infrastructure, a hospital, our education system. So all this uh, COSATU mm. and his partners in government uh, cannot just walk away and wash their hands because they've been the architects of the destruction that we're seeing today in our society. I spoke to COSATU uh, General Secretary uh, Begin Chalinchali uh, this week 
And he said that this march was aimed at two spheres, government and the private sector. So my question then becomes, let's start with the private sector. A march like this won't change government policy if it's aimed at the private sector. Um, what can a march like this do to coerce the private sector to invest excess funds, as uh, he was uh, saying? I, I mean, fortunately, uh, the private sector in South Africa uh, is playing a critical role, uh, particularly um, in sustaining um, the, the employment that we have. Remember that uh, we have seen massive destruction uh, of um, many state-owned enterprises. So there's been huge damages with SA shutting down, with Transnet shrinking uh, because of uh, its inefficiencies, with ESCOM as well experiencing the same. So the impact of government policies and its own SOEs have destroyed a number of communities because of the corruption that is embedded in those institutions, hurting many small enterprises in the case of ESCOM because it could not even supply electricity. Therefore, many SOEs collapsed. So, therefore, a private sector has sustained uh, uh, because of its wealth class, uh, because of its uh, competitiveness in the globe, um, and fortunately also in certain areas because of the high commodity prices, it's been able to carry the South African revenue services through the profits and the taxes that is paying. So really, um, it's not surprising that uh, the, minister, the president, President Ramaphosa, uh, has announced huge reforms in the energy sector because he understands that the state has been hollowed out, that this, the resources are very thin um, within the state. Therefore, it's got to call, up, call upon its partners uh, the private sector, and who are very much encouraged by the reforms that are announced in the electricity sector. And we think that government should be doing more uh, in the rail sector, uh, in the ports, in the maritime sector, but also, more importantly, uh, in uh, at last, uh, a true is prosecuting mm -hmm. authority, making those that were involved uh, in the repurposing of our state institution and corruption uh, to account, and we look forward to to them seeing that day in, that days in court. So really, I'm saying that quite a lot of work needs to be done, and and it can only be done uh, if the private sector uh, is promoted, given that the state capacity uh, is very, very weak, and therefore we have to lean upon those that are capable as we rebuild state capacity. All right, so that's the private sector. Let's turn to the state now, because again, this march was to provoke uh, some kind of action from government. Now, when you shut down the economy for a day, you try to do that, um, it's, it can be effective when you're dealing with a company that can't afford to lose profits. But a government doesn't shut down. You can't force it to take action with this kind of action, I put it to you. And I just wonder if this is a way to provoke government or could there have been another way? Well, I mean, in this case, uh, parallel from Kosatu, is really sending a message uh, through using this cannon of a general strike. That is, uh, we are two, 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 uh, two, two and a half years from uh, the next election. Uh, so therefore, um, uh, if you don't work with us, uh, we basically are going to use this weapon that we have by shutting down. Because we've seen that the most affected uh, were basically state institution. We, we saw in Mangaung, for example, that teachers went and joined the march um, in Mangaung. I think in many other departments, mm -hmm. uh, workers didn't go to work, they preferred to march. Uh, so therefore, it's really uh, one of those uh, canons that uh, workers have uh, through, with their partners in government to say, hey, remember that we are looking at the figures that that you are seeing about uh, your, your potential of uh, going beyond 50 percent in the, the coming election. We've got uh, no increase um, uh, or at least the past increase 
that we received from you was about 2%. And we saw that you bought new cars uh, for ministers. Uh, therefore, uh, you need to come back to the bargaining table uh, from Nehau's side and bargain with us fairly so that you can get a better increase than the one that you promised. So they're flexing their muscle, it's within their right, but also they're sending a political message to government that uh, we're watching you. Uh, if you don't at least agree with some of our demands, uh, you may see yourself not having our support in the next election. So help us understand the political message that we saw today where Saftu and Kosatu appeared to be united in this cause. And then today we saw disruptions when Kosatu brought in the ANC uh, to be part of this march. And some people will say, hang on, this looks like the ANC marching against itself. Does Kosatu have to pick a struggle here? Fortunately, uh, that we have competition uh, between the two federations, SAFTU. SAFTU had taken the initiative around the general strike. So, so Zulim Zema had made a call a long time ago. I think uh, basically uh, the Tripartite -right Alliance uh, uh, saw an opportunity that uh, if they lose this initiative that had been started by SAFTU, they will might uh, end up. Um, uh, losing some of the membership because we know that there is a lot of war of movement among trade unions in South Africa, where Kosat unions are being seen by some members as too close to government, therefore having political ambition than workers' interest. So their participation really was to try and regain their own initiative, but more importantly also uh, to uh, to try and protect uh, their own interests in, in, in sending a message that um, we are part of, uh, of, of, of South Africa, therefore what SAFT is raising is also our issue. Therefore, don't make it as, a, as, a stand, as a someone who's standing by and watching. Don't make it as though it's a SAFT victory where this general strike had to be successful. So therefore, we participate uh, to uh, reclaim uh, our own space because historically it's been our own space before SAF2 was formed. But more importantly also, um, we hear SAF2, but want to protect our political elite uh, by making a noise. When in fact we sit with them in NC, we see them in various other meetings of the Tripartite Alliance, and we discuss issues that we share both, uh, and we forget about the very same people uh, whose policies of this alliance are hurting the, the unemployed and the poor uh, who have uh, lost so much because they don't have access to many resources that were available before and under uh, ANC government have been destroyed uh, through the ANC leadership proposing and taking away a lot of the resources that are supposed to go to people uh, for the political actors that are closer to the ANC. Uh, the recent case um, of Diokran, um, who was murdered, uh, and how the money was being used by some at Tembisa Hospital is just um, one, of an ex one of the example that shows how this alliance uh, uh, of trade unions and the state have really forgotten about the black poor um, and concentrated on their own interest and, uh, and arguably uh, seeing ANC and COSATU together there is really trying to reassert their own interests so that in the patronage network that today governs South Africa, they don't get left behind, that the NC sees that they at least they do come forward and neutralize those that are seen as an opposition uh, to protect those in power, given that they would access to voice these issues they raise today in various quarters since they sit in the alliance as partners. Dr. Mondi, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Always good to talk to you. Your insights greatly appreciated. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Uh, good Thank evening you. to your listeners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye -bye. So that's uh, a view about uh, the national uh, strike that, uh, yes, workers are very entitled to uh, take their grievances to the streets, but there, it does come at a cost and uh, perhaps a loud message being sent uh, to uh, the government uh, to take action, especially with uh, elections looming.